You know, over the past few years, we've had some pretty bad red tides, both in Sarasota and Tampa Bay. Researchers say some of our actions, people, we are making the red tide even worse. Hmm. Now, that's nothing new, but now the science is backing it up. Yeah, kind of hard to uh, ignore it at this point. As Fox 13's Kimberly Quizon reports, researchers say it's not too late, though, to make things better, but we need to do it soon. Captain David White has grown up on the waters of Anna Maria Island. Fish are responding good. Lots of people around to take fishing. Things are great, so we just want to see it stay that way. Last summer was a different picture. One of the worst red tides we'd seen. It was different red tide than normal because it started in the bay and progressed its way out. The red tide bloom in Tampa Bay killed hundreds of tons of dead fish. It followed a few months after 200 million gallons of wastewater was spilled from Piney Point into the bay. It was definitely an uncharacteristic year. Red tide occurs naturally, but a study just published found human activity has played a consistent role in intensifying red tide blooms over the last decade. Load a lot of nutrients when there's a red tide around, you're gonna get a worse red tide. Researchers from the University of Florida, Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation and Sarasota Bay Estuary Program linked blooms in Charlotte Harbor and surrounding areas to nitrogen inputs from the Caloosahatchee River, Lake Okeechobee, and areas upstream of the lake. The amount of nitrogen coming down the Caloosahatchee River will control how big it is, how long it lasts, and uh, how intense it is. Dr. David Tomasco says nitrogen levels in the water must be reduced. We have to do more than we have been doing lately, otherwise the this beautiful bay that we're used to uh, could slip away from us. Captain White hopes changes will happen, keeping these waterways crystal clear for generations. Now that there's scientific evidence actually showing that nutrients, phosphate, excess in the water from humans, hopefully there'll be some regulation and figure out a better way to do it. Kimberly Quizon, Fox 13 News. And scientists say reducing the nitrogen load going into the water will also help seagrass beds thrive, which produce healthy estuaries. And remember the seagrass, it's important food for manatees, and we've had so many manatees diving, dying of starvation over the past year because of dying seagrass beds. So it's all tied in there. It's